another discussion in the small cap power room. I'm Jim Gordon, your host. And joining us today is Frank Holmes, Chief Executive and Chief Investment Officer at U.S. Global Investors, which specializes in natural resources and emerging markets investing. He is also an author, uh, co-author of The Gold Watcher, Demystifying Gold Investing. He is a regular contributor to magazines, websites, and he has a popular investment blog, Frank Talk. Frank, welcome to Small Cap Power. It's great to be with you. Great to have you as always, Frank. Um, you know, I bring this up because it, it, we did two interviews this year, and I bring it up because they couldn't have been more different because the world was so different. We talked in late January, uh, just before you know what was coming, and then we talked in August to get your assessment of the first five or six months. Uh, three months later, since we last spoke, let's get an overview of you on how things are going. Things are incredible, and history says belong this market. Uh, and there's many reasons besides 70 years of data points that says that whenever you're going into a presidential election, the markets are up, they carry to the end of the year. We're gonna have, a, it looks at this stage, a, a Democrat president, and when you have a split Congress and a Republican Senate, that's the best for stock markets. In just 70 years of data points. Now we have a complete different paradigm shift, and that is MMT, Modern Monetary Theory. That is free money, zero interest rates, negative interest rates, send out checks to people. This is to being practiced by the G20 finance ministers and central bankers, and this is significant in a zero interest rate environment belong stocks, stocks that are growing their revenue and cash flow and free cash flow. They can pay dividends, and you're seeing a big bifurcation in the stock market that's been rewarding those companies with revenue growth. Uh, Frank, I want to turn to the airlines. They've been in the news a lot lately. Um, uh, Pfizer and Moderna have come out with some uh, some positive news, uh, as I guess we all are cautiously optimistic about what the future is holding in terms of that. Um, talk a bit about how that is affecting the airlines uh, in terms of their stock and where they're going. And then I want to talk to you about some specific comparisons to other times in the last 20 years. Well, it's totally contrary, Jim. Uh, the amount of money that's coming to our jet CTF is just unprecedented. Uh, it, it was $35 million market cap of the assets back in March, and today it's 2.5 billion. Uh, there's tremendous speculation uh, based on previous cycles. Ignore the negative news, look at the positive factors that will drive it higher, because in previous cycles, the airlines crashes and then soars. And over 12 months, it goes, it rises between 80 and 120% after 9-11, after SARS, after 2009. So there's tremendous speculation on a vaccine will be the game changer. Right. And, and that's what we're seeing. Now, we've seen the low of people flying in April hit 90,000 people a day, down from 2.7 million. It ran up to a million people a day in the U.S. And now it's trickled back here to about 800,000. So I think in the next wave, it'll go to a, a million. Uh, when that happens, because you get the daily print from the TSA of how many people are flying, they're clearing every day, then yeah. I think airlines will have a next big wave on the upside. The airlines in the U.S. are reconfiguring. Tourism is up, but not business. The, everyone's Zooming in business, but yeah. people want to get out of Ohio State. You know, it's just cold now. They're leaving New York. They're going to Florida. So United Airlines is flying from small towns nonstop to Myrtle Beach to Fort Myers. So things like Southwest Airlines all of a sudden out of nowhere start flying in October from Phoenix to Cabo St. Lucas. Uh, so you're seeing not going through their big hubs now. They used to always do hubs. It's a new pattern. And they're, they believe they're going to be profitable by the end of March, the airlines. Frank, when I was looking at the notes that you sent me about the airlines, uh, I noticed that, and you've alluded to this, about the, the last 20 years and the the uh, incidents that have taken place in 2001, 09, 2003. Uh, the turnaround you mentioned is, it, it, you know, 6 to 10 to 12 months. Do you think it's going to be a lot faster once you said profits in March? Uh, uh, if, if things continue to move along in terms of what Pfizer and Moderna are doing, I'm trying to get to it. Is, well, do you think it'll be a shorter turnaround as opposed to the other ones, you've the other examples you've listed? <sighs> I think it's going to be longer, uh, but I think what's interesting is using AI. So the airlines were using AI to what they call yield management on pricing of tickets and moving things. Now they're changing, and we've seen this, by the way, with Apple. Apple is shutting down stores whenever people are getting sick in an area, shut it down, and then they reopen it. So now you're seeing the airlines 
reconfigure where they're flying. They don't have to always fly through their hub, say United flies through Houston. They're going to go nonstop. Interesting. Let's stay with the airlines. Another big story recently, of course, is Boeing, uh, their 737 MAX, has been approved to fly once again. They were uh, grounded back in March of 2019. Um, their stock has gone up uh, 6%. Uh, another, again, we're not psychiatrists, but I'm curious for your thoughts on, on this um, and in terms of the, the customers they crave and want to get them back on these planes. Yeah, so they want more efficient planes and they want smaller planes. Uh, and so the reconfiguration of the, those airplanes and now airplanes, these new ones, clean the air. So that's really important how every five minutes the air is being fresh from outside and it will kill any viruses. Uh, I've done one flight since uh, the beginning of this year and that flight was to Salt Lake City and I was so impressed with, with Delta flying them, how clean it was, they have foams, they have sprays, they distance everyone, no one can sit beside each other. So the airports are spotlessly clean, the airplanes are clean. And why Salt Lake City? Because it's tourists, big yeah. tourist center. Um, and, and with that, that particular model though, uh, are people gonna really think, take a wait and see? Uh, will they be slow to, I mean, uh, hearing a lot of this, check with your, uh, whoever you're booking your flight with, that, um, and if it is, uh, uh, if it is a, a 737 MAX, you can change without any penalty, but you think people will slowly come around? I think when they can feel comfortable, they've gone through about a million, two, million, three people a day, then they may change their attitude. But I, I really think the airlines are going to go slow at this before they start adding all those additional fees as they've streamlined the organization. Something else that's really important is that the government in the U.S. has truly recognized the worst thing to do is to lay off all those technically skilled people, and then you have to onboard them again and go through the FAA and all that stuff. If you keep them employed, you keep them being training, then it's much faster if the economy snaps back. I remain bullish because the PMI, Purchasing Manufacturers Index, is through the roof. The two biggest trading countries in the world, 40% of all global trade is China and America. Their purchasing manufacturing index is like the airplanes taking off. So this is very bullish for the next six months of the economic engines globally. Um, when we talked uh, last August, you laid out, which made a lot of sense once you did lay it out for myself and, and viewers who are watching these, these discussions, about home improvement. Uh, we talked about home improvement and the boom uh, when we were here last August. You talked about how it had increased dramatically uh, in May and into the summer. We're talking about Home Depot and Lowe's. It makes sense since when you brought it up. Can you talk about three months later? What are we seeing now in that in that area? Still doing exceptionally well. Uh, Home Depot is going to pay out an extra billion dollars of bonuses and salaries to all their workers because they're going full tilt. Right. That's great because that means they're going to continue to spend. The magic in this environment is just look for companies that say they're hiring and run away from those companies that are laying off because you can see their stocks immediately move. So Chipotle, is said they're hiring 10,000 people because they perfected their delivery mechanism, uh, whereas uh, California Kitchens, pizzas, it went bankrupt. Yeah. So you, it's the one says they're hiring 10,000. Amazon said in March, they're hiring 100,000 people. They then said it again, they're hiring another 100,000 people. So I think that's, that's the magic here that you want to look at. And I think you got to dust off uh, Peter Lynch's old book, One Up on Wall Street, and look at companies and products you're using, you're liking, buy them because they're going to trade higher. Uh, we're talking with uh, Frank Holmes, the chief executive, the chief investment officer at uh, US Global Investors. He is, of course, a writer uh, and has a very popular investment blog, Frank Talk. Uh, Frank, it's always a pleasure to have you with us. Uh, appreciate your insights. And we should also say that if you uh, like this video, uh, please make sure to give us a thumbs up and check our website out, Small Cap Power. Uh, check our YouTube videos out. Frank, thank you. Uh, I hope to, to talk to you in the new year. Uh, it's been great talking to you uh, many times this year. Yes, and then make sure they're subscribing to Small Cap Power to get all your newest information that's coming out because there's a real hunger with millennials for information on new companies and small cap stocks. It's very significant. There's a there's a void out there in the capital markets of good timely stuff like telemedicine. Where are they going to get the information? It's going to be through the platforms like yourself. Uh, wise advice, Frank, and thanks for the endorsement. It's uh, as we mentioned, Frank Holmes. Thank you, Frank.